Gunther is opening up about some very interesting topics, so we'll see what's going on there. We'll also check out some big stories involving Drake, John Cena, Jade Cargill, and more. Starting things off with Jade Cargill, Jade's name has been involved in lots of fan discussions lately because everyone's trying to figure out where exactly did she go. Jade Cargill was making constant cameo appearances on WWE television ever since Fastlane. No matter if it was a premium live event, an episode of Raw, NXT, or SmackDown, there was a span of time there where Jade Cargill was nearly appearing on every single show as they continued to hype up her official WWE debut. But over the last few weeks, things have slowed down a lot. With the teases of Jade Cargill's debut, and she hasn't been seen as much as she once was several weeks ago. So naturally, fans got a bit concerned and started to wonder if anything is going on there. Did plans change? Did they put things on the back burner for Jade Cargill out of nowhere? Because it was so strange to see her from going being heavily featured and teased to suddenly mysteriously missing. Well, there's been several new reports that have been coming out addressing these fan concerns. Reports claim that there's been no setbacks for Jade Cargill's debut plans. She has not been injured or anything of that sort. That they're reportedly still back in planning her big debut. It was also reported that Jade Cargill has been continuing to train at the WWE Performance Center on a nearly daily basis. So nothing has gone wrong there at all. It looks like everything is still going according to plan for Jade Cargill. Maybe this is how they wanted it to be. Introduce her on WWE television, have her pop up everywhere, pull her back for a bit, and then have her make her surprising official debut when you least expect it. It appears that that could be one of the strategies they're going with here for her debut. There's still no absolute confirmed word on what brand Jade Cargo will regularly appear on when she does debut, but strictly theorizing based off hints and teases they've been giving us so far, it definitely seems like Jade Cargill will at least be starting off with NXT. Maybe it's not a long run, maybe it's just a brief NXT run, but they've definitely been heavily hinting at that brand being Jade Cargill's first home in WWE. Jade Cargill did appear on NXT way more than she appeared on any other brand. She met with Shawn Michaels, she was even seated inside the arena to watch the NXT women's title match, and she even had that end of the show teaser where she was pointing to her wrist like she had a watch on. So when you take a look at those teasers and really roll them all together, it does look like they're getting ready to let Jade Cargill loose on NXT and start her WWE takeover on that brand. Majority of fans also seem to agree on the idea that Jade Cargill just has to be monstrously portrayed in the ring, at least for the first handful of WWE matches. Just have her making the biggest statement ever by absolutely crushing whoever she's in the ring with. And if Jade Cargill even wins the NXT women's title in that fashion of just squashing her opponent and dominating them, that would really put an exclamation mark on her debut. The NXT women's title has seen lots of dominant champions in the past, such as Asuka and Shayna Baszler. Those two former NXT women's champions were known for absolutely destroying a majority of their opponents and truly striking fear in everyone that they came across during that run. So if Jade Cargill could get in a very similar run in NXT that's as dominant as those two were, her WWE career will be off to a great start. She already has lots of buzz going around her name as it is. So pair that current buzz with a run of dominance in NXT, and it'll be extremely easy for her to transition into the main roster and have everyone talking about her big dream matches right away. Jade Cargill is already dreaming big for her main roster run. She spoke about how she wants to work with Bianca Belair, Charlotte Flair, Becky Lynch, and more. So hopefully those dream matches do take place and she gets off to a hot start here real soon for her WWE career. Current Intercontinental Champion Gunther has been setting the world on fire with his historic title reign. WWE has its two world championships with the undisputed WWE title and the WWE World Heavyweight title. But Gunther has really elevated the Intercontinental title 
to almost feel like a third WWE world title. That's just how great his run has been. Extremely limited losses and just an absolutely historic reign of dominance. Well, Gunther recently spoke with Steve Fall, and he addressed some of these pretty big topics. One of the topics they discussed was the idea of him facing off against Roman Reigns, and if that match would be possible. Gunther had this to say about that question, quote, We'll see. Do I think in the long run it will be a very interesting matchup? I think so, yeah. Because I think what Roman is to the Universal title now is what I am to the Intercontinental Championship. I think the role or position is very similar to that. But he's doing his thing now, I do my thing. That's okay for me. And further down the line, that's definitely something interesting to get into, end quote. And Gunther is completely right. Roman and himself are in very similar situations right now for their respective title reigns. Roman Reigns is currently in the middle of the longest WWE title run in modern day history and trying to beat Bruno's all-time longest WWE title reign. Meanwhile, Gunther is already the longest reigning WWE Intercontinental Champion and continues to make history with each passing day. So different titles, but very similar situations in that regard. And a lot of fans just can't wait to see that dream match of Roman Reigns versus Gunther one day down the line. Gunther was also asked if he believes there's a chance that the Intercontinental title could main event night one of WrestleMania 40. Gunther flat out says that he doesn't expect the Intercontinental title to main event WrestleMania 40, and how he believes it'll be two WWE world titles in those main event spots. He was also asked about adding new members to Imperium, specifically adding women to the group. Gunther had this to say about that question, quote, We discussed that internally once, I think. Our choices would be Charlotte or EO. That would be the ones that we could see as a good fit, especially skill-wise. I think it would be a good addition, end quote. That's a very interesting reveal there by Gunther. He wanted to have either Charlotte Flair or EO Sky join them in Imperium because they would be a natural fit all around for the group. So we'll have to see what other big names are still ahead for Gunther. Wrestling fans listening to Drake's Scary Hours 3 were greeted by a very surprising John Cena name drop. On the track Wick Man, Drake name drops John Cena with this line, quote, I'm almost expressionless. John Cena would know the emotions that I wrestle with, end quote. It's always amazing when the wrestling universe crosses over into mainstream pop culture. But what are your thoughts on today's stories? Leave your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe with all notifications on and leave a like if you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, guys.